for some of you guys that, that have not been involved in a while, are you still getting contact from guys that you went overseas with or you coached with and, and, and now they're, and now they're coaching. Do you, do you, do you have correspondences like that? Get lots of notes and Facebook and uh, items like that, not just birthdays, but Hey, remember the time when we, we were in Poland and you know, uh, hear from quite a few people. Um, you talked about the World University Games, Jack Pepper, uh, who yeah. lives in uh, Athens. He's notorious still to this day to wear his uh, Team USA jersey when uh, usually if US beats Canada, um, he drives by, honks, stops his motorcycle or whatever he can get in front of my uh, my house. So he's notorious for uh, reminding me and, and, he's, and he's wearing his Team USA jersey that he wore in 2001. He still talks fondly about that about that experience. I'm starting to get second generation um, guy, Leon, Joe, you would remember this name, Leon Rozick, um, you know, from the mid nineties, uh, his daughter is uh, gonna be a freshman here. So I'm starting to get some second generation of, uh, of guys that I coached who's, uh, you know, the, whose kids are coming here or, or uh, looking at this school. Uh, Sean Francis is another one from, I think, 93, 94. His, actually, his son uh, goes here, so I've been hearing from him. And our kids actually compete against each other at the 2006. So I get a lot of correspondence, a lot of fun hearing from, uh, from, from people in, uh, you know, from, uh, from, that, uh, from that era. Same here in terms of, uh, you know, old players reaching out. Um, you know, the guy, you know, social media helps, of course, but them bringing around their kids and the guys, you know, want to come over to dinner and introduce their fiancés and, and wives and kids and wanting, wanting them to teach, teach their kids how to skate and that sort of thing. It's, it's it, you know, lifelong relationships and that's what it's all about. What, what always uh, is great is when a former player and it, and it doesn't have to be, you know, somebody that played for me reaches out and says, talk about how you built the program there. You know, how'd you get sponsorships? You know, tell me about the foundation you guys started. Because that, that was one of the best things we ever did at mm -hmm. Penn State was we started our own endowment, you know, and it was alumni that were the ones that, that donated uh, to that. And, and you know, it, it's still great, even though Penn State's program's gone to the Division One level and we have a – you know, the rink we always dreamed of having and everything, there's still ACHA teams, you know, at Penn State. And um, like Al said, I got to tell you, we built a model here that a lot of other schools are going to suddenly find themselves looking at because, uh, again, the, you know, they're, they're going to find out that we, you can still have good organization, good teams representing your school, but you don't have to spend the kind of money some of them war spending. I hate to see these schools that are just dropping programs, you know, and, and uh, by the way, it was really cool to see that Alabama Huntsville, who I said won, won the first ever national club championship that I'm aware of, you know, lost its program, but because of the passion for our sport, their alumni stepped up and, and saved the program. And again, that just goes to show that, you know, we, we all know it. We all feel it. Hockey is a very passionate sport and hockey people are just a different group and, and a lot of fun, a lot of great things. I, I got to tell one quick story, Rast, if you'll allow me. In 2004, when Ohio University beat us in the national championship game, um, right before I left for nationals, my wife said, we're going to paint the, uh, the office when, uh, you know, when you get back or a bunch of rooms in our house. And uh, she kept asking me for some opinion. And I said, I don't care, whatever, you know, just, you know, whatever makes you. So I, I came downstairs and the painters are in my office. You can see the blue wall in the background. They started painting my office green. <laughs> and, and I said, stop, what are you doing? <laughs> And I said, you can't do that. <laughs> That's our art trial. <laughs> That's Ohio University's color. <laughs> so they painted the, the office blue. But I told, like I've told Dan before, there is a room in our house that's green. It's the guest bathroom. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> Heidi, what are you doing? What are you painting the office green for? <laughs> oh, no. 
and I, and I will tell you this, that when I retired from coaching, um, Dan uh, gave me an Ohio University shirt, and I still have it. It's hanging up right next to all my other stuff down in my basement because that was a, uh, you know, that, 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 that meant a lot to me, you know, coming from our, our biggest rival. We, I mean, we shared a lot of, a lot of experiences together, a lot of on the recruiting trail, you know, the season never ended. It never ended. It, playing the games was just one part of the season and and uh yeah we we uh great rivalries um you know just great memories too unbelievable the, the other thing i don't want to forget is the very first national championship acha national championship at the division one men's level was won by coach murdoch you know and, and iowa state and it was a fabulous tournament i mean it was it was really good um, and you know, we, we were we were certainly proud to have hosted it. Glad I never had to do that again. All the Penn State fans uh, converted by that uh, championship game to Iowa State. Yes, they were. <laughs> we talk more about that than anything. The conversion of the Penn State fans to Iowa State fans. Just just a, a few kind of uh, points as as we uh, get close to wrapping up here. You know. When, when I went through and talked to all of you, there was so much information about the first 10 years and, and um, you know, the formation and, uh, to, you know, again, to use Joe's forming, storming, norming, and performing. Some of the performing points that I'm just going to mention, and, and if any of you have comments on them, I, I would very much welcome them. You know, really in the last five years for the ACHA, they've gotten up to 530 collegiate teams. They have their first time uh, first full-time employee, which I think started in 2016. 2017, they had the first conglomerate national championship at Columbus, uh, where all five divisions, men's one, two, three, women's one and two were there. And also in that five-year block, they have adopted the USA Hockey Safe Sport Policy, which just gives a safer environment for everybody involved. Um, and the other thing is, you know, all the national championships and, and, and uh, you know, uh, Mike Radakovich's name was mentioned. Mike was always a big proponent of being able to put the national championship out there for free. He, he felt very strongly that it was something that, uh, you know, should not have a price tag attached to it. And so, uh, you know, hopefully looking down, Mike loves the fact that now the national championship is all on YouTube. And I don't know if any of you guys have ever caught that. But just the quality of the product that's being uh, given there at the national tournament, I, I think is, is very impressive, regardless of whether it's ACHA or NCAA or, or whatever. But uh, any of you guys that have thoughts along those lines, I'd love to hear. You know, because I've been, I've been away from it now for a while. It, it's what keeps me, you know, back in it and, and being able to, you know, see, you know, how programs have grown and, you know, who's new and, you know, what's happening in, in hockey and the quality of the play, the quality of the coaching. Um, I mean, it's, it's amazing how much progress has been made. And uh, again, it just, uh, to me, I always get a little bit of a tear in my eye when I think about, you know, all that, you know, kind of started back in Chicago and, you know, Chicago showcase, uh, you know, a couple of people just getting together and, you know, uh, look at it now. It's, it's amazing. That uh, I was most impressed with uh, in my last years, and it was a, it was a bit of a challenge because it wasn't one of those universal acceptance things, and that was the, uh, the Safe Sport program. Uh, we had uh, uh, Ashley Bevins and John Beadle of USA Hockey. I remember coming to, the na to our national meeting, and, and uh, they, were, they were pretty adamant about us accepting the uh, safe sport program and uh, uh, as I said there were it wasn't a unanimous decision to do that but in the end it was a good decision when it was accepted and USA Hockey I think has done a good job and I think they're working with in the registration process to make sure that the players and the coaches everybody gets registered everybody goes through the safe sport program but it's, it's it, I think it means a lot to again to the credibility of the ACHA and uh, in that they're adhering to the uh, safe the safe policies. Testament to that fact as well is that, you know, we also have now a member of USA Hockey on the ACHA board. So you can, you see how important that USA Hockey is to us. And obviously in this day and age, you know, the safe sport and the background checks, uh, it's the liability, you know, so it comes with size with 500 teams, 
you know, you don't know where these coaches are coming from. So uh, that, that's a huge, huge uh, item, uh, being able to uh, not only background check people, safe sport, but also offer them the opportunity to progress through the USA Hockey Coaching Clinics as well. That's been a huge thing for 10 plus years with Mike Lichtenberger, where we've advanced the guys down in Naples, you know, from, uh, from a one to a level three. Uh, on our own, our own initiative, and that's uh, you know that's a testament to some of those guys. I'm just going to ask you because you're in that Dallas market and and involved with uh, with the stars. Um, what what was some of the um, community after effects after the national tournament was over? Um, you know, having had not only the influx of teams, the influx of parents, you know, the financial part, the hockey part. You know, obviously we touch on just the level of play. I think it surprises a lot of people. Um, you, you go into new, and I, and I, and I think that's, you know, one, if we back up a little bit, um, bringing the tournaments together, uh, into one, uh, entity, one selling, one thing you can sell was, was a great idea. Um, from, from my perspective on, you know, running events and running facilities, um, it's, it's a, it's a good product and to be in meetings where, you know, you're sitting with with uh, our leadership group and our COO is agenda. There's five agenda items, and number two is the ACHA tournament um, at the NHL level. is pretty cool. Um, but to bring it in um, again, the video quality, um, you know, the replays of the hammer guy uh, fixing the boards last year was was the quality video quality was great. I think Brian can maybe maybe. Uh, maybe jump in on that one a little bit. Um, but I think when, when we, when they left, I think the, the impression was incredible, especially when you go to an area that, that we do have ACHA teams here, um, you know, but uh, um, they aren't as, as uh, maybe not the top end of the ACHA. Um, they're more of, of your traditional um, um, maybe club hockey teams, um, but they get to see, you know, what it, what it took to get to the level. Um, and our local associations now look at ACHA as, as a viable uh, landing spot when they go to uh, uh, college. Um, so it helped out immensely. Um, you know, it was unfortunate this year we didn't get, you know, back again, but uh, you know, in our market, it, it was, it was a great, great thing. And um, you know, ticket sales were, were outstanding. Um, the facilities were great. Uh, I think everyone had a great time. Food was incredible. To wrap it up. I'm going to do something uh, a little impromptu, and, and 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 actually, hopefully, it'll be a little bit fun too. And uh, I'm I'm going to go with ladies first, okay, Zoe. So I'm going to put you on the spot first, okay? And, and we're going to play a game of fill in the blank. And the first sentence is: Never in my wildest dreams would I have thought that the ACHA blank. Okay, so I'm going to go to each one of you and let you fill in the blank. Never in my wildest dreams would I think that the women's division would have over 75 teams uh, within 20 years. Um, and then personally, you know, I never thought that the division would name a player of year award after me, which was, you know, brought a tear to my eye, as Joe would say. <laughs> and then to be in the Hall of Fame is just... It's, you know, I'm honored and, uh, and I just think about all the people that, uh, you know, you see the, the vice presidents and the commissioners and the regional um, folks, but all along the way, it was the, the student athletes and the coaches who really just doubled down. They wanted it, they could see it, and uh, they made it happen. It's great. Probably even my wildest dreams when I ever think that we were going to be where we are 30 years from now or 30 years ago. And uh, I think that uh, uh, the, uh, the future is very positive. I think it's, uh, it's exciting the way the, 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 organ the organization is being run now. And I think that there's only, I won't say that we're gonna put one in every one of those 2000 ranks that Al wants to do, but I suspect that uh, uh, we certainly will see a continued growth once we get past this 
crap that's going on right now with the coronavirus. Never in my wildest dreams would I be sitting here in 2020 thinking that uh, that some of the people sitting here would actually talk to me. Um, so, uh, and, then, and then and then and then to get a compliment from from Coach Joe, that's just like that just completely made my completely made my year. I I, I think for me, I actually in um, a big thing for me was the uh, was the Hall of Fame in 2011, and I think that really really opened opened my eyes as uh, when I spoke, realizing at that point there was 450 teams or 452 teams. I sat behind Joe and, uh, and a few people from Penn State and he was there showing me the, you know, what was going on and, and uh, with the new rink and things and things like that. And so for me, um, you know, in one sense, you know, the fact that there's what 10,000 people playing as student athletes uh, and at the same time, I have a 13 and a, and a 15 year old and, and um, you know, with the, with the tournament coming to Columbus and my, my, both my boys have played out of Columbus and one still plays there is, is being so proud of the philosophy the ACHA has, has developed in the beginning and that philosophy is still there. And I would love to see my, both my boys from a selfish perspective play in the ACHA because they both, you know, they both play hockey, and I'd love to see them play for an ACHA team. I don't know if it'll be in my lifetime, but I, I think uh, the whole philosophy and the organization is set to, you know, make it possible to go into those 3,000 rinks in the country uh, with a men's team, women's team, uh, just teams in the ACHA, because the ACHA is the place to be right now with all the other crazy stuff that's going on. And uh, I think... Uh, you know, I, I wish them well, and I know they're on the right path, and I know Greg Barnett is just a super addition to this organization, and uh, he's one of the best people we've ever had, quite frankly, with the ACHA. We're going to keep this relationship with the ACHA, USA Hockey, and the AHCA. So keep her going, Craig, and keep her going, the rest of you guys. Well, the first thing uh, you have to say is the number of teams – the number of athletes uh, that are impacted each year. But the most significant thing for me is never in my wildest dreams that I expected the quality of the program with five classifications, two women classifications, the world uh, program, uh, <clears throat> the quality of the play, uh, the quality of the programs overall. Never in my wildest dreams would I expected this kind of exponential growth in, in, the, in what has happened. And my hat's off to every one of you is, is and what each of you have contributed to make this all possible. This is what I expected. I thought it would be really <laughs> successful. I believe this organization could uh survive me being its president uh, <laughs> uh, you know i it's been said before but to me that that we would have impacted the thousands and thousands of lives not just the kids who have played but their parents their grandparents you know their communities um you know th th this this has been just a a, a dream come true you know, the ACHA has just become a, a natural part of my life. I would never imagine that. Uh, my best friends, uh, my teammates, and then most of my close friends in my life that, you know, don't even live in Michigan. They live across the country. So that, that's, that's what I take. Just never so many players, um, so many, not just players from like Ohio University, but so many players from all the other programs, like how – how they like pass the hockey's done everything's done they're all part of a a, a group um they they you know they they stay in touch they i mean jesse hubenschmidt gets asked what what year he graduated from ohio university because he's just a part of our friendship you know and so many guys that you see like that played against and and battled against each other i never in my wildest dreams would would think that like large group of players would would this would impact them so much that that they stay connected and they're all proud of it um that's probably the the 
biggest thing that I see in my wildest dreams. And this time the sentence is, I would not be surprised if 10 years from now you told me the ACHA blank. <laughs> Probably, uh, I would say that it would be if we, if there were if there were fifty teams in the or not fifty teams, we'll say twenty teams in the ACHA, maybe the stronger ones in Division One that move up to Division One in the NCAA. I think in uh, in ten years, I think you'll you'll hear uh, continue. I think you were talking about media and you're talking about internet and sort of that that evolve. And I think uh, ten years from now, especially because I went to the tournaments uh, up in Columbus, and I think that uh, ten years from now, the ACHA is just going to be uh, that much more forward uh, in everybody's language uh, and especially in the hockey community, even from where it's uh, been from thirty years ago to the last five years. Uh, it would be my hope that the culture that's established there now continues. Uh, it scares me sometimes, the NCAA Division I scholarship sports, where it's become such big business that uh, kind of blanks out everything else that's going on. And I think right now the ACA is the best example of, of where young college people can participate and really get the most out of it. It wouldn't surprise me if there was some uh, effort to try to have the ACHA uh, provide, pro be the governing body for some other sport. Uh, the, the NAIA started out as a football uh, organization and then found themselves, because they did it so well uh, that they were pressured to uh, take on other sports, which they did. Uh, but that's just one thing that would be a decision that I see that the organization might need to face sometime in the future. I think it uh, wouldn't surprise me a bit if this becomes the model for how a lot of other NCAA current sports are administered. Uh, because we have shown, I think that's, again, the legacy of the ACHA is that we, we've done something here that's pretty amazing. You know? And uh, I, I think our, our stature in USA Hockey and with the uh, American Hockey Coach Association proves that. And I, and I would not be surprised, given the pressure that's mounting on schools and, and budgets, that, that the ACHA model will be looked at uh, as, as a uh, you know, way to go. Ten years, someone finally got smart and finally fired me so I can enjoy my <laughs> retirement, get, some, get back some of my free time. But in ten years, I see the, uh, the ACHA network on TV with the uh, McGibbon brothers, uh, the lead game announcers for our play of the, uh, game of the week. 10 years, I see the there being another player, coach, uh, national champion, a coach that was once a player. Um, sorry, that's my dog. <laughs> a, a, a player coaching a, coaching a team that uh, wins a national championship. I think, uh, I think that's, I think our players are, are, are that good. And, uh, they can become coaches in the ACHA to win a national championship, where I don't have to be the only one at the Division One level. Look forward to seeing um, some ACHA women players um, playing pro, and I also look forward to seeing more women coaching men's teams. I will, defer, I will defer my time to, to show everybody that I've learned finally what brevity means uh, to Al Murdoch. Uh, and and uh, let let him let him have that wrap up. <laughs> Thank you to uh, Craig for all the different things that he's pulling together, organized really professional. Keep the good work, Craig, and, and uh, I think you've got an army of people out here that are 100% behind you, and it'll help uh, help grow all the things that I know you want to grow. So keep up the good work like to uh, thank just a few people. Um, first of all, uh, uh, Mike, Mike Radakovich was a, was a very close friend and, and gave me the first opportunity for my involvement with the ACHA. 
um, and more recently to uh, good buddy Paul Hebert um, and to uh, Craig Barnett that uh, tasked me with uh, trying to trying to help tell a story. And, um, you know, on behalf of both those guys, we would really like to thank each and one of you individually and corporately. Um, you know, it's, it's pretty amazing when you looked at last year, there were somewhere between nine and 10,000 student athletes that uh, not only got to pursue a meaningful education, but got to do something that they love and, and wear the name of the school on the front of, the, on the front of their sweater, which is, which is pretty awesome. So um, Craig McCarthy, Dal Murdoch, to Don Spencer, to Tom Keegan, to Joe Batista, to Zoe Harris, to Marshall Stevenson, to Dan Morris, and to Brian Moran. Thank you all so very much for your uh, contributions um, over the course of the last 30 years, which, which really took uh, an idea that evolved at a McDonald's somewhere in Illinois to a Zoom call during a pandemic. And, um, and, and it, it's really uh, been something very special tonight. And I think through each one of your efforts, um, it's created something that is tremendously special. So um, thank, thank you all so much.